Welcome to segment two of the retirement of Edward Rowe. This introduces you to Edward Rowe, the African-American male. This one's a little somber. This is Ernestine, Ed's mother. And as every mother of an African-American male teenager does, she had a talk with her son when he was in his teens. But her talk was a little different because when she was 13 years old, Thomas Shipp and Abrams Smith were lynched in nearby Marion, Indiana. And the pastor of her church was the undertaker from Muncie, and he went and arranged to get the bodies secretly and got them out so that they could be a proper burial. But the mob who had lynched these boys wanted those bodies back so that they could bury them in unmarked graves, which is part of the terrorism of a lynching. So every male in Muncie, Indiana, in the Whiteley neighborhood, imagine that, of Muncie, Indiana, was on the roof with a gun that night, and the sheriff went out and met the mob outside of town. He said, look guys, so if you wanna go into there, you're not gonna come out alive, so why don't you just go back home, and they did. So you can imagine the conversation a mother has with her 14-year-old son, right after his father dies, of a misdiagnosed appendicitis. Her youngest son. So that kind of shapes Edward Rowe, and it shapes how I teach my U.S. history class. Because that man is now my husband, and I can talk about this in ways that other U.S. history teachers can't. And the other thing, that's actually how I got my job. When we started riding bikes, and we're going to talk a whole lot more about the travels that Ed and I do, um, but when we started riding our bikes, we went quite innocently into Highlands Hammock State Park, and found the CCC Museum. And Mickey goes, oh my gosh, my dad was a CCC guy. Let's go in. So we go inside this museum and we go through and we, this is his dad here when he was in the CCC. And we're going through the museum and we're talking about this and this little white southerner lady who's probably about 80, she comes over and she goes, what do you think? And Mickey goes, oh, he said, my dad was in the CCC. And her innocent response was, oh, I imagine he enjoyed the free tuition or the help in buying a home because of the GI Bill and how it shaped American history when all of these young men that were in the CCC or the Army were able to take advantage of all of the GI Bill advantages. And he goes, no, my dad was African American. None of those were available to African Americans. They were specifically designed to be administered by the states so that they could fix that problem. So when I came in as a substitute teacher here at Coral Springs High School, I just thought, okay, I'm finishing my PhD at FAU in, Coral, in the Master in Public Administration, Public Administ School of Public Administration. And so while I'm finishing that, I'm trying to figure out what to do. So I take a job substitute teaching and I'm sitting in front of the US history class substituting for Mr. Eichholz. And um, the textbook that is open where the kids are supposed to be working and it talks about the GI Bill. And I'm standing in front of a class that's more than half African-American. And I'm reading through the textbook. And it doesn't say anything in there about excluding African-Americans. So I stand up and I say, you know, one thing that's not in the textbook here, and just right then, I didn't know she was an assistant principal. I thought she was a security guard because she had a walkie-talkie on her belt. She walks in, sits down in the back. I'm thinking she's going to pull a kid out for testing or something like that because a substitute teacher, they don't really involve us too much. She sits down and I go, um, she, she came in as soon as I said, my husband's father and every eyeball in the class, like went boing, because Mickey had pulled me, he says, don't, 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 don't do the gay thing. He says, just kind of lay low, you don't want to be in trouble, you don't want kids going home talking to their mothers, but I just, my, my, my husband's father, and then this lady walks in, she's African American. And I go, in for a pen, in for a pound. I might as well finish my story. And I said, my husband's father is African-American. He was in the CCC. He was also in World War II. And the GI Bill was designed for the states to be able to do Jim Crow segregation and exclude African-Americans by the design. And so I finished that explanation. The kids are all listening really good. And so the chief stands up this lady that came in that I thought was the security guard, turned out to be the AP who does the hiring, this is the principal. And she goes, what do you think of Mr. Levitt? And they go, oh my gosh, his stories are so cool. 
And so she leaves, and I get a phone call on the classroom phone, so I answer it in Ms. Reichel's room. She goes, Mr. Levitt, we've created a job position specifically that we would like you to apply. The job number is blank, 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 blank. Can you put your application in for that? And long story short, I got hired because I told a story about my husband's father. So that gave me the license to teach U.S. history in the context of Mr. Levitt versus Mr. Rowe. And you'll have to stay tuned for segment number 